Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial. So in the last tutorial I was explaining a little bit about Trapgold Soundkiss which is a plugin from Red Giant. Uh, I was explaining why I use it and how to use it and uh, why is it so important to have it if you want to do good uh, audio reacts. So in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to import sound keys keyframes into Cinema 4D uh, which is a little trick I have come up with. So <clears throat> first off I'm going to go into, uh, into After Effects and I'm going to create a new composition. I'm just going to call this Cinema 4D Import. And then I'm just gonna import a track. I have a song here. I'm gonna create a new solid. I'm gonna call this sound keys. Uh, so first off, I'm gonna scroll to the chorus of the song. If you press LL on the keyboard, you can see the audio waveform. And I know that uh, this is the verse, this is the verse, and there comes a drop before the chorus. So I'm just gonna find, and there we have a drop. So I'm just gonna put it right there and then I will play the song for you. I can feel your heart. Oops. I, feel your heart I don't know why it's lagging. I can feel your heart me when I can't Got me feeling love never... So there you have the song. Uh, so now I'm gonna apply sound keys to the layer. And I'm gonna choose the song over here in the audio layer. And then I will try to find, uh, as you can see, we have a bass kick here. So I will try to, I'll actually put the preview on quarter because my computer is kind of slow right now. So now we'll try to find, oops, where the bass kick goes. And we want this uh, output bar to be filled uh, and then go down zero and go up to 100 and down zero every kick. So. Not quite, uh, almost actually. Just gonna do like that. That's actually really good. So, what we'll do next is we will actually leave it here and uh, then we'll just go into Cinema 4D to make something that will react to the music. So, for this tutorial, I'm just gonna make something. It's not gonna look uh, uh, super good, it's just for, uh, for your understanding how to do this. And then in future tutorials this summer, I will do like really cool stuff and then you will know how to use this technique. So in this tutorial, I'm just gonna show you how to uh, how to get the technique, right? So uh, I have a new project here. I'm gonna increase the timeline to 600 frames. And I'm actually just gonna go here and add a plane. Uh, you will need to know a little bit about uh, Cinema 4D before you do this to be able to understand. So I'm just gonna increase the width segments and the height segments to 100. And I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. And then I'm gonna go over here to modifiers and add a displacer. And just make it a child of the plane. Uh, in the displacer, I'm gonna go over to shading and just add a shader which it will displace um two. So I'll pick a noise shader. Then I will go in here and I will increase the global scale of the noise map to 1000. Maybe, you know what, 500 will be good. Uh, so now I have just a noise map uh, applied to a plane, uh, which is displacing a little bit, but nothing happens. So we need to go down here in the noise scale and we will add one centimeter movement at the, oops. Uh, why did I do like that? What's happening? Oh, there. One centimeter at X, one centimeter at the Y, and said. And then I'm gonna put the speed at 0.1. And if we look now, we have a little bit of a movement. Uh, we could actually use some more. So if we put it at like 0.5, that's almost a bit much. So 0.4 will be good. And 
then we can just go ahead and go to the displacer and in the object tab we can increase the height a little bit we put it at 20 so now it looks like this when we press play we have this displacing moving plane uh, we can actually put it at 0.3 just so it doesn't move too much so let's say we want this now to uh, to actually displace a lot more when the kick in the music comes in we want to go from 20 to 50 then it's actually as simple as we did in After Effects we just go back to After Effects we already have uh, uh, we already have this set up, so we can just go here to sound keys and just a custom parameter. Go from 20 to what did we say? 20 to, to 50. Let's say 20 to 50. To 50. And we want it to fade down a little bit. Uh, maybe 0.65 seconds to fade down. Uh, to go back to the 20 and then you just press apply I don't know why it's lagging at the moment okay there we have it so now we have the keyframes here I'm just gonna press U to minimize the other stuff so here we have the keyframes that we want and before we can go on and import it we actually need to have the uh, the music uh, imported to cinema 4d so I'm just going to add a null, and this is the way I do it. I'm just going to call it audio, and then I will go up here, timeline, and I will drag the audio null into the timeline, and then go to add special tracks sound, and that will actually open up a little a little sound tab here. I will just go ahead and. Just take my song. Uh, the thing now is that the song will actually start at the beginning, and that's not what we want. We want it to start at the same as it did in After Effects. So what I usually do is you can actually make the composition like a little bit longer, like that, and then you can just go to the beginning of the timeline, and then just press Shift Control D, which will split the layer. Uh, and then you can just drag, oops, drag the the song. We can we need to make the composition a little bit longer. Let's make it a whole minute longer. You can drag the song. So you have the song from the beginning, and then you can just go to the where we cut the song, and then over here it will say one thousand seven hundred and fifty nine. Uh, frames and for this to be exactly you have to have the same uh, frame rate in After Effects I have 30 frames as in Cinema 4D and I have 30, 30 frames there also so uh, 1759 so go in here and press on the sound in the timeline and go here and go negative 1579 uh, I think it was right yeah no 759 sorry 759 it has to be a negative value because it then it will take away these frames in the beginning of the song so now if you go ahead and play it starts in the same place as the in after effects so now how to get the keyframes into cinema 4d it's actually kind of simple but yeah so let's head right in so go into after effects and we're gonna make this composition as it was. Uh, can just remove that. So now it uh, now it is as it was. Just select the output and press Control C to copy the keyframes. So when they're copied, you can just go over to your desktop, right click, make a new text document. And just open the text document and just Control V to paste all the keyframe data. So now we have a lot of just numbers and stuff. And I know this is kind of complicated. You don't have to understand this. You just have to do as I do. So we're just gonna clean up the text there. So we only have numbers and all the text here in the beginning also. 
like that and then you can just press save and I will just rename it to test. So now I have this text document here with all the numbers and the data. So now you can just go into Cinema 4D and make a new null and call it keyframes. And then you have to go to the displacer. Make sure that you're in the beginning of the timeline. Go to the displacer and press a keyframe on height. It doesn't matter how much it is right now. So just press a keyframe so we have it. And then just drag the displacer in here and also drag the keyframes. So now we have now we have this. Just gonna minimize it a little bit and make this a little bit bigger, like that. So now, if we minimize audio here, and if we select the keyframes null, and go to functions, ask animation import, and then just find your text document, press on it, and here we get a little bit of an import window. And you only have to press frame and comma and then OK. And now um, uh, now we have all the keyframes here in uh, Cinema 4D. If it didn't work on the first time, sometimes it doesn't work on the first time, I don't know why, then you can just press the keyframes null again and try one more time. It often usually, it usually works on the second time. But it works uh, for the first time here, I don't know why. But now we can just press on that one, Control C to copy it, and then go over to height and Control V. So now we have copied the keyframes and applied them to the height parameter of the displacer. So let's try now to watch how it looks. So as you see now, it actually displaces and bumps up when the kick goes exactly as we wanted. So this was just to you, for you to understand the concept. And now when you understand it, you can actually realize how much you can do with this. You can actually apply it to, you can apply keyframes to a light, so it's blinking to the music, or you can like, you can do whatever you want to any keyframe, uh, wh wherever you can like add a keyframe, then you can actually make it uh, move to the music or to increase or decrease to the music. So it's actually, it's mind blowing how much you can do with that. And in my, uh, in a couple of the tutorials I will release now in the summer, I will actually use this kind of technique to import keyframes into Cinema 4D. So it's good for you to understand this, and I recommend you to buy sound keys, uh, or at least go down to the website and download the trial. Otherwise, you know, there's a couple of ways to get plugins or get stuff in the world on the internet. I'm not gonna go into that, I didn't say that, but you know, if you want it, you can get it, and I definitely recommend you to get it. So yeah. But that's it for this tutorial, and I hope you liked it, and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!